I want to thank you for joining me today for communion. We're working from my book, Do This in Remembrance of Me, a one-year communion devotional. Today we're working from week 27, on the same night he was betrayed. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. Everyone's gone through tough times, difficult events, and challenging seasons in life. These happenings are important. However, as we partake of communion today, we are reminded that our response to life is more important than the troubles we experience. Jesus Christ is our example. He was about to face the most difficult scenario that he or anyone has ever faced. He shared this revel by revelation with the Apostle Paul, and I want to share it with you today. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Betrayal is the lowest low blow I can imagine. It can cause unbearable pain in the victim of this foul act. A trusted person lifts up his heel against a confidant. Jesus was betrayed by a familiar friend, a man in his circle of associates, a trusted delegated authority by the name of Judas, surrendered him to his sworn enemies. Judas was the man who dipped his hand with Jesus in the dish. The Lord described Judas as one who eats with me. The betrayer was sitting right by Jesus at the same table. David made reference to this act of treachery in a song. Psalm 41 verse 9, Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. We've all been betrayed by someone. We've all experienced the pain of this blow to our inner man. As we partake of communion today, we remember that Jesus shared the Passover with his disciple before he was passed over to the Roman soldiers on his way to the crucifixion. He offers a textbook response to his treatment and the bleak prospects that awaited him. He took the bread and gave thanks. When we're facing dire situations in our lives, do we continue to give thanks? No matter what you're going through today, you can partake of communion with thanksgiving. You can thank God for your salvation. You can thank God that you're in a personal relationship with Him. You can thank God that healing is available to you at the other end of your faith in God's Word. These thoughts are encapsulated in the Scripture. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything, I said in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Jesus responded with thanksgiving to the present and future tribulations he faced. He focused on his purpose, which was being fulfilled simultaneously with his suffering. He gave thanks in light of this truth. His blood would be shed and his body would be sacrificed to fulfill God's purpose. So he gave thanks as he focused on his purpose rather than his persecution. We can also give thanks when our commitment and consecration to the will of God attracts opposition and ill treatment. We can give thanks because God has our backs. He has us set apart, called us, put us right with himself, and he has lifted us to the splendor of life as his own. Listen to Romans 8.31 to Amplified. What then shall we say to all this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foe if God is on our side? I like this scripture out of the International Children's Bible. So what should we say about this? If God is with us, then no one can defeat us. No matter what you're going through today, you can choose to rejoice. You can tap into the force of joy within you. You might not think you have any reason to rejoice. You might think that rejoicing is on the east and you're on the west. As you partake of communion today, do so with a scripture written by Paul during another stay in one of his prison offices, wrote Philippians 4.4. 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. I like this in another translation, the Phillips. It says, delight yourselves in God. Yes, find your joy in him at all times. Partaking of communion reminds us of our union with Jesus and the sacrifice he made for us. If God's for us, who could be against us? 
When Elisha and his servant were surrounded by the enemy, described as a great army, Elisha didn't panic. He knew the odds were in his favor. God was on his side. When we are surrounded by circumstances and the odds against us seem to be insurmountable, we can echo the words of Elisha. He spoke to quell the fears of his servant. 2 Kings 6.15 When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh my Lord, what shall we do? Have you ever said that? What are we going to do? The servant asks. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. There's more healing with us than sickness that surrounds us. There's more mercy than judgment at our disposal because Jesus extends mercy to us from the mercy seat. There's more hope with us than despair because God is the God of all hope. And this hope anchors our souls when we're facing stormy seas. As we partake of communion today, let us do so with joy and thanksgiving. Jesus sacrificed his life for us. Let us consume a scripture before we consume the communion, communion elements today to put our lives and circumstances in perspective. It refers to Jesus. It is the gospel in a nutshell, Romans 4, 25, the Amplified, who was betrayed and put to death because of our misdeeds and was raised to secure our justification, our acquittal, making our account balance and absolving us from all guilt before God. Praise the Lord. We can give thanks today simply because we have a relationship with God. We can rejoice in the Lord because he is alive and we are acquitted. All charges against us have been dropped because God has made a decision in our favor and Jesus paid the penalty for our transgressions. You still think you have no cause for joy and thanksgiving? Consume this scripture before you consume the communion elements. Habakkuk 3.17 Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit beyond the vines. Though the labor of the olive may fail and the yields, fields yield no food, <laughs> though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on the high hills to the chief musician with my stringed instruments. May this be music to your ears. Father, we thank you that you put a song in our hearts, a song of thanksgiving, God. We'll be like the leper who turned around and gave thanks. You said that he glorified you. So God, we give thanks, God, for this great salvation. We refuse to neglect this great salvation or put it on a shelf, but always keep our eyes upon the great work that you've done for us in Calvary. Let's partake together.